Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today I'll be covering a really useful free add-on from the Asset Store called Alt Events, which is an extension of Unity's built-in Unity Events. We'll start off by getting it off the Asset Store, then I'll be comparing it to the built-in Unity Events and explaining why these are far superior, and then we'll actually be going into an example of using them. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. Okay, so go ahead and pick any old Unity project that you want to test this in. I've got this project I'm working on in my own time. Go across to the Asset Store, and if you don't see it, go to Window, Asset Store, or Control-9, and then search for Alt Event, Alt Event, okay, like Ultimate Event. Go ahead, click on it, and when it loads, then you can download it. I've already downloaded it, so you can import, okay, and when you press that, it'll then ask to put it into your project and just press Import. Once you've done that, you're ready to go ahead and start using it. So I guess the first thing is, why would you use this, and what even is it? So let's do an example, let's make an empty game object. So Normally, you're used to having Unity events, okay? Unity events, you know, get triggered when certain things happen. So if I was to think of an example, if I search for the player uh, input module, okay, and we just change this to be Unity events down here, you'll see these and you might recognize them, right? It tells you here is the, the event name, some uh, parameter that's been passed through, and then your list of callbacks, you can do whatever you want, okay? You drag things in, and you drop down the function, and then you call it. The main benefits to Unity events is it allows you to have custom logic that you don't have to hard code. The problem, whenever you have gameplay logic that's hard coded, it means that if you want to make changes, you have to go into your code, you have to tweak it, that you know causes possible problems there. Whenever you change code, you're possibly breaking something. And it means that if you want different you know kinds of logic for different things, then you need to code it multiple times, maybe use inheritance or interfaces to have the different logic spread out. For example here, whenever input happens, um, what if, you know, you had co-op where one player does one set of things with input and the other player does another set of things? You don't want to have to have two scripts to define both of those things. It would be nice to just use the player input module, uh, design whatever player one does, and then have another one design what player two does. Same in your game, maybe you've got different enemies that take damage, and when the player takes damage, a set of things happen, like the UI updates, and then, you know, they make a sound like, uh, or whatever. And then when the enemies take damage, they make different sound effects. So you don't want to have to you know, hard code all that, you want to be able to drag and drop and design in the editor. The only concern I've seen people have with Unity events is the performance, even though most people haven't actually checked that, they've just heard it might be bad. So I'm going to do a separate video comparing C Sharp events to Unity events to Alt events and just seeing the overhead. Now, what I want to say about this is, I'd say Unity events are still definitely better to use in scenarios where something happens every so often, right? Like for example, on a collision, uh, on star, you know, on these very infrequent things. As long as it's not on an, you know, every frame basis, I don't see the problem really. I'd rather favor, you know, ease of design and writing a lot less code and being more flexible compared to, you know, maybe saving a few frames. So even though Unity events are great, there are still quite a few downsides. So one of the downsides is that you can only have one parameter coming through, okay? Now, that parameter can have lots of data because it could be a class with many, many fields and properties, but the point is you can only have one parameter and you can only call methods that take in one parameter as well as with a return type, it's effectively useless. So you can only really call functions that return void, that return nothing because let's say it returns bool, you know, you can't really do anything with that anyway. But alt events is really, really useful and I'll show you why now. So if we remove the player input component and add um, one of the default ones they've got. So if we just search uh, alt event holder, okay. So all this is, is an example really of an event here. Now this would be raised in your code somewhere. And then here is just like in the Unity event when you say what happens. So let's say plus, okay. Now this gives me lots of different options. So what I can see is I can see all the components on this game object. You can first of all, modify the game object stuff, the transform stuff, and then stuff in the alt event holder class itself. Okay, and it even tells you down here, here are the properties and events in the alt event holder. You can even go and call events from the base classes of this mono behavior. So you can go down to the behavior component object, which is pretty useful. So for example, let's say I want to do something, let's say on start, I destroy this game object. I can use one of the pre-mades they made, the life cycle event, and I can say on the start event, let's add an action. And I want to say, okay, so destroy is in the object class. So if we go down to object, destroy, okay. And then it gives me the two destroy methods, the overloads, we've got object and object with a delay. So let's actually go for the delay. The object is itself, so let's drag in itself, and then the delay of one second, okay? So this game object here, let's just give it a, a mesh renderer and a mesh filter so we can actually sh see it, okay? And we'll say it's a cube, and the mesh renderer, let's just give it a material, okay? 
the default diffuse. Actually, we're using the, uh, let's do this, default. We'll use the Pro Builder thing, okay. So here it is, I'm gonna press play, and it should destroy itself after one second. So now that that's done, I want you to compare that to how you would do it normally. Normally you would write some code that would say, you know, on start, call the destroy method and then do this. So you'd have to code all of that. But why not just do it by design? Because the benefit of doing it by design is I can then go over here and decide, you know, no, nah, I don't want to do that anymore and just, you know, press the minus thing. Okay, it's gone, right? It doesn't happen anymore. You can do whatever you like. You can even read values and then pass them in as parameters to the next events. It's really useful. I'll show you an example of that now. So if I go over here, okay, I've got this cube in my game. Now, this is some code that I've already written, but uh, so here's a trigger events 3D, okay? So this is something built into alt events. This is a pre-made thing they've done. They simply raise an event on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit. So on trigger enter, what do I do? Well, I call this deal damage method. So if you look over here, all it does is it basically says, uh, if the target does not have health, then return false. Otherwise, remove a value from the health and return true. So the true and false just lets us know did we deal damage or did we not deal damage, okay? So what I do over here is I say, okay, um, I actually drag in the deal damage script. You'll actually see here, I call deal damage action, deal damage, okay? And I pass in a collider and a value. Now, the collider I pass in, okay? If you look over here, it says parameter zero collider. So I can either turn this off and actually drag in a collider somewhere but the thing I want to damage is actually from this, this event here. Okay, I need to pass this into here. So if I press this little uh, infinity symbol, which is basically like linking it together, it now gives me all the parameters, okay, from, from the event. And it's saying, yeah, you can use this as parameter zero, okay? Then the value, so here's the second parameter. This is something you can't normally do. I want to deal 10 damage, okay? And then what happens is um, this returns a boolean. Remember this, this deal damage returns a bool. So if I did successfully deal damage, then I pass it into this condition. Now this condition is something else I've made where all it does is it takes in a bool. If the bool is true, it raises on true, alt event. And if it's false, it raises uh, alt event on false. So I'm saying, okay, if it was true, then destroy the cubes, destroy itself. So that means that what this logic I've built up is, is when it touches something, if the thing it's touching has health, damage it and then destroy itself. Or if it collides with something that doesn't have health, then do nothing. So if I press play, okay, I move around, I touch the cube, I take 10 damage, okay? You see the health bar go down and the cube goes away. If I actually go to the player right now and I take off the health behavior, okay? What should happen is when I run into it, because I don't have the health behavior script anymore, obviously it doesn't deal damage. It keeps raising that event because it's, you know, I'm colliding with it, but because I don't have health, uh, it keeps returning false whenever it tries to deal damage, meaning that it doesn't get destroyed. So I've made a duplicated version of the cube. I've taken out all the logic. Let's just do something random. Let's say on the game object, let's read a bool for whether it's active. So we know that's true. Okay. And I'm going to use that true to go over here and say, um, let's change the static bool. Okay. And then rather than saying like true or false manually, I can link it and I'm linking it to the return value of the first thing. So we're going to say, is it active? Yes. Okay. And then it's going to actually set a static to true. So you watch this boolean up here. Okay. Let's press play. So when we walk into it, it should make it static because of reading that other value. It's a stupid example, but it's an example nonetheless. Okay. I've gone into it. It's now static. I go into this one. I take 10 damage and, my, and the cube goes away. So now I've had all that logic without having to write any custom code this video just for this. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you liked it, then please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. If you want to see more alt events or some other stuff, okay? I could come up with some more complex examples. You can also give me some ideas down below too. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all next time and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Trandy, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Zumran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Rec, Iris Letter, Rene, Remy Baldwin, and Jay Donald. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. As well as now you can actually become a member on the YouTube page so that you get extra stuff when we do streams each week. If not, it would also be greatly appreciated if you could check out our social media such as Twitch, Twitter and Discord as well as our website. That'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.